Hi there! Today we will talk about the DHT family of sensors that provide both temperature and relative humidity readings, and we will concentrate on two specific members of the family, the DHT11 and the DHT22. These sensors have a digital output that needs to be decoded, and to do that I will use an Arduino Uno, although any other microcontroller would be as effective. We will be able to make the readings both through the serial monitor of the Arduino and through an LCD display also controlled by the Arduino. Before continuing watching the video, please take a moment to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and consider supporting the channel using the affiliate link below to buy something you need on Amazon. You buy what you need and you will support the channel at no extra cost to you. And of course, another way to support is also through donations. All details are at the bottom of the video description below. And now, let's begin. For today's project, we are going to use a sensor that measures both the temperature and the humidity at the same time. It is part of the family of the DHT sensors, and I have two samples of them, a DHT11 and a DHT22. Both of these kind of sensors come in a standalone format, like this one, or mounted on a breakout board, like in this case. These sensors are very similar to each other, not considering the breakout board, of course. The main difference is the temperature and humidity ranges that they can measure, and the precision with which they can do that. For example, the DHT11, this one, is capable of measuring temperatures between 0 and 50 degrees centigrade, which is equivalent of 32 to 122 Fahrenheit, and this one instead has a range of temperatures that goes from minus 40 to plus 125 centigrade, or minus 40 Fahrenheit and plus 257 Fahrenheit. For what concerns the precision, this one measures temperatures with a precision of plus minus 2 degrees centigrade, which is about uh, 4 degrees Fahrenheit. And this one instead has a precision of plus minus 0 0.5 centigrade, which is about 1 Fahrenheit. This one is capable of making uh, one read every second, but this one cannot make measurements faster than one every two seconds. And this is because the higher precision requires a slower time to do the computations and transmit the information to the computer to which they are connected to. Talking about that, let's see about the pinout of this kind of device. It's, it's the same for both of them. They have four pins each. The two at the ends, the one on the left is the plus for the power supply, and the one on the right is the minus power supply. So pin one and four are the plus and minus for the power supply. Pin number three, the second from the right, is not connected to anywhere, so it's not used. And pin number two, the second from the left, is the one where we can retrieve the information in terms of temperature and humidity through a serial data output protocol. Both, again, require a pull-up resistor on the signal pin, the number two, which has to be connected toward the depositor. So basically it's just a resistor between pin one and two in both cases. The resistor is supposed to be between five and ten Kilo ohms. On the breakout board, actually, the resistor is mounted internally, and so there is no need to attach it outside. And in addition to that, the breakout board presents only three pins, because the pin number three of the sensor itself, since it's not connected, is not ported outside. In this particular breakout board, besides the pull-up resistor that is connected between pins one and two, there are also a couple of LEDs, one over here and one over here. The first one basically turns on when the board is powered up. The second one pulses when there is a reading done on the output pin. 
In our project we will use mostly this one, which is uh, simpler to use, although less precise, but we can make an example of also usage for uh, the DHT22. And uh, both of them will be used and mounted along with an Arduino board. I'm using an Arduino Uno for this project. And uh, the program that we will write for the Arduino will be good for both the DHT11 and the DHT22. Here is a rendering of the schematic of the circuit using the DHT11 made with the tool Fritzing. And uh, I've been using the view that shows how the connections are done between the Arduino board and a breadboard which contains the DHT11 in this case. Actually, this is not exactly the picture of a DHT11, but uh, since Fritzing did not have the right picture, I used a similar one, and so don't look at these labels over here, but just look at the labels that I put underneath over here. So the one on the left will be the positive of the power supply, the one on the center will be the negative of the power supply, and the one on the right will be the output signal. So the Arduino Uno powers directly the sensor through the 5 volts and ground pins that are connected directly over here through this red cable and through this black cable to the pins 1 and 2 of the DHT11 board. The sensor instead with this blue cable is connected directly to the digital pin 2 of the Arduino. So this is it basically, since this uh, device already contains the resistors for the pull-up of the output signal, we don't need anything else to create this circuit. For the DHT22 it's a similar picture, the only difference is that for this one we don't have a breakout board, but we will use directly the sensor itself. The sensor has four pins. The one on the most left, pin 1, is the positive of the power supply, the one on the right, the pin number 4, is the negative of the power supply pin 3 is not used, and pin 2 is the one for the signal, which needs a pull-up resistor. So again, the Arduino provides the power supply for the sensor, plus 5 volts and ground over here, which are connected to pin 1 through this red cable, and pin 4 through this black cable. The sensor is connected to the digital input 2, and goes over here directly to pin 2 but pin 2 is also pulled up to the positive of the power supply through this resistor of 10 kilo ohm. Now let's go to the lab and uh, let's assemble these circuits and see how they work. So this is a circuit with the THT11 which I put over here and as you can see here we have just the connection on pin 1 to the positive of the power supply through the Arduino 5 volts. The pin 2 is connected to the ground, again through the Arduino power supply available here. And then the pin 3 is connected to digital pin 2 of the Arduino itself. Before writing the code for the Arduino, we have to check that we have selected the right Arduino board on the IDE. In this case, you see that the Arduino 2 is selected, and so we need to change it to the Arduino 1. To do so, we need to go to Tools then board, then to the AVR boards, and then we can select the Arduino 1, which is the one that we are using for this project. Another thing we need to do is the installation of the DHT library, which provides all the functions to access the DHT sensor capabilities. So we go again to Tools, uh, then we go to Manage Libraries, and then we search for the word DHT, here in the right top corner. And here is the DHT sensor library we want to use, which is provided by Adafruit. To install it in the IDE, we just need to click on the Install button and then Install All, so we install all the necessary dependencies. And the library is quickly installed, as we can see from here. We can now start writing the program. First of all, I'm going to write this line, which will tell the compiler that I want to use this library. Next, I will define a constant holding the number of the digital pin of the Arduino that we will be using for connecting the signal from the sensor. I will also define two more constants to identify the type of sensor that we will be using. I define the same constant actually for both the DHT11 and the DHT22, but only one will be used at any given time, the other one will be always commented out. Later on, by using this constant throughout the program, I can change the behavior just by using the correct constant and commenting out the other one. We will see this constant in action later on. Next, we created a DHT object that we will be using for this program. 
When defining the object, we need to tell the library the value of the Arduino digital pin used for the readings, as well as the DHT type for which we use the constant from above. Since I am going to write two different functions, one for reading the data from the DHT sensor and the other one to print this information on an LCD display, and since I want to easily access this data from both the functions, I will use static variables to store the temperature in Celsius and in Fahrenheit, as well as the humidity. Static variables are those that are defined outside of a function and that are visible by all the functions in the sketch. All these variables are going to be defined as float, which means that they can hold numbers with a decimal point. To start with, I am also going to initialize these variables as 0.0. .0. I'm also writing some comments to make sure anyone that reads this program knows what these variables are for. And these comments will be useful to me too when I will go back looking at this program sometimes in the future, when I will have forgotten the meaning of these variables. When you write programs, put always a lot of comments so you will always be able to understand what you have written. Moving to the setup function, we need to initialize the serial monitor, which we'll be using to read the data collected from the sensor while the LCD is not connected yet. And then, I will also need to initialize the DHT object that I have defined before. The reading of the sensor will be done through another function that will be called inside the loop function. To make this function visible from inside the loop, I will have to write it down before the loop function itself. Let's call this function measure. This function will first read the humidity and will store it in the variable h. Then it will read the temperature in Celsius and will store it in T. And finally it will read the same temperature in Fahrenheit and store it in the variable f. Note how the two temperature readings are both taken using the same function, but for reading the value in Fahrenheit we need to pass a parameter set to true. And now we will write these values on the serial monitor, so we can see if this part of the program works fine. This will be just a set of print statements to write down what we want to see on the serial monitor. I'm using print line or print ln in those cases where after writing the information between parentheses I want to go to the next line. And now what is left to do is to call the function measure from inside the loop function. Now that the program is complete, we need to save it, and I'm going to put it in my projects directory under the Arduino folder. And of course, the verification does not work because I forgot to tell the ID that the print functions are part of the serial monitor object, and so the compiler does not know what these print statements are. Let's fix that, and then let's try again. So we just need to add a serial dot in front of each print statement. Let's try the verification again now. And good, now the verification and compilations are both successful. Oh wait, I almost forgot. I need to insert a delay after each reading because the sensors are not capable of making readings at a fast pace. So I just need to put a delay of 2 seconds at the end of the loop function. And this will cover both the DHT11 and the DHT22 sensor. The delay, of course, uh, needs a parameter that is expressed in milliseconds, so 2 seconds is uh, 2000 milliseconds. Let's now verify and compile again. And uh, yes, everything seems to work fine now. So what we need to do now is to upload the sketch to the Arduino Uno and run the program. So this is the code for the DHT11 sensor. We just need to basically connect uh, the USB connector over here and then hit the upload button. Oh, I see there is an error here. I'm gonna have to fix it. Okay, so let's hit the upload button one more time and uh, the code is uploaded, so the circuit is already working right now. And you can see over here there is this LED that is blinking and it blinks basically every time there is a reading made by the Arduino on the sensor. So let's take a look now at the serial monitor and so we can see what's going on. So as you can see we are reading a humidity about 48% with a temperature of 22.10 centigrades or 71.78 Fahrenheit. If I touch the sensor we should be able to see the temperature to rise 
and probably also the humidity because the sensor will catch also the humidity of my hands. And in fact, as you can see, the temperature is increasing as well as the humidity. Now, if I remove my fingers, the temperature should go down again and also the humidity. And in fact, here it is, the humidity is already going down, now it's 64, 60, 57% and so forth, as well as the temperature, which is going, well, temperature right now is going up. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, see, it's going down, definitely. Now it's 26, 26.1, the temperature goes down much slower, of course, because it has a greater inertia of the sensor. Now it's 25.9, 25.8, and so forth. And the humidity is already at 38%, as you can see. So that's it. So this is how the DHT11 works. Let's now try with the DHT22. Here is the circuit with the DHT22, which is a little bigger than the DHT11, but this one does not have the breakout board. Again, the positive and the negative are taken from the Arduino board itself. The positive goes to pin 1 of the DHT22, and the negative goes to the pin 4. Pin 2 instead is the signal output, which is connected to, again, the digital pin 2 of the Arduino. And there is this resistor of 5.1K put between pin 1 and pin 2, which pulls up the voltage on pin 2 toward the plus 5 volts. So now that we have changed the circuit, removing the DHT11 and putting instead the DHT22, we need to adjust a little bit the code to be able to run the program with the other sensor. And to do that, we just need to comment out the line for the DHT11 and uncomment the one for the DHT22. And that should be it. Let's see if the verification works. Everything is fine, so we can use now this new compiled Arduino code to run the test with the THT22. And now I'm going to connect the USB connector over here, and I'm going to upload the code. The code is uploaded, and this is already working. Now we have to just check on the serial monitor and see if we can see the results for this circuit. And there they are. Right now we are measuring a humidity about 53.2% and with a temperature of 22 centigrades and 71.6 Fahrenheit. Again, if I touch the sensor, I should be able to increase both the humidity and the temperature. And in fact, the humidity is increasing and also the temperature, as you can see. Now we have about 73% of 77% of humidity and the temperature has risen to 24 centigrade or 75 Fahrenheit. Now I, that I have removed the fingers, the humidity is going down again, and slowly is going down to also the temperature. Very slowly, but it is doing it. Let's wait a little more. Yeah, it's definitely going down now. Okay, and this concludes the test for the DHT22 sensor. Let's now take a look at the LCD that we will be using for this project. It is an LCD based on the driver HD44780 made by Hitachi. And this driver is basically is characterized by the fact that it presents 16 control pins over here. And we can easily identify them by the labels on the LCD itself. In here I made this picture and we can see basically the first pin is the ground pin which is indicated, however, on um, the display itself with uh, VDD. And then we have the VCC, which is basically where we put our 5 volts for powering the circuit of the display. And then there is a contrast pin, which is basically accepts a voltage between ground and VCC, which is used internally to adjust the contrast of the display itself. We will use this using a potentiometer to provide the variable voltage. The next pin is number 4, is the register select, which is represented on the display with the letter RS. This register select basically provides the way to distinguish if we want to write information on the data register or the instruction register, that are the two registers inside the circuitry of this LCD.
The next pin is the read-write, labeled with RW, and uh, this pin is basically states at one we want to read information from the LCD, and is never used, and uh, it has to be at zero when we want to write on the LCD. So in our case, we keep this pin set to ground, because that's how we normally use an LCD display. Then there is the enable pin, labeled with EN, and this is used to enable the writing to the register. So the moment we present the word that we want to write on a register, we have to set this pin to 1 and then back to 0, and the information will be written either on the data register or the instruction register. Then from the 0 to the 7 we have the data bus, which is of 8 bits, and in this particular project we will use only the four most significant digits from the 4 to the 7. And the last uh, two pins are for the anode and cathode of the LED that actually lights up the back of the display. And uh, once the LED is lighted up, we can adjust the contrast using actually the voltage on the pin 3. Let's see now how this display is connected to the Arduino. And this is the display connected to the Arduino at the potentiometer we just talked about. These are the connections that we are going to be using. As I said previously, data pins from 0 to 3 are not going to be used. We are going only to use D4 to D7. And those data pins are connected with the pins here on the Arduino 7, 6, 5 and 4. This is the ground for the power supply, which goes here, which is powered by the Arduino over here for ground and uh, the plus 5 volts. So, this is ground, this is the plus 5 volts of the power supply, this yellow one, the number 3, is the contrast pin, and as you can see, it's connected to the central connector or potentiometer, where the other two ends are connected, one to ground and one to the positive of the power supply. So, basically, this yellow wire will be able to carry a voltage, the V0, but, which goes from 0, when the cursor is all the way to the ground, to plus 5 volts, where the cursor is all the way to the positive. And then the next uh, is uh, this one here. This is the register select, which we are connecting to the digital pin 1 of the Arduino. And then the next one is the read-write, which is grounded, like we said before. And then finally we have the enable pin, which is connected to the digital pin number 3 of the Arduino. The anode and cathode of the backlight LED are connected through the positive of the power supply and the negative and ground through a resistor of 220 volts to limit the current through the LED. This resistor is really not needed because the LED can work without it, but if you want to preserve the life of this LED as long as possible, then it's better to have it in there. It won't create any significant diminishment of the illumination of the display, but will save several years of life to the LED that controls the backlight. And here is the full circuit, where I just have added the sensor, the HT11, with its uh, board. And uh, this sensor is connected, of course, uh, pin 1 to the positive of the power supply, like we saw it before. The center pin is connected to the ground of the power supply. And the right pin, the number 3, is connected again to the digital pin the number 2 of the Arduino. So this is the full circuit. Let's now move on and see how we can make this work in its own totality. Now, before writing the program for uh, controlling the LCD, we need to install another library on the Arduino IDE. To do that, again, let's go under Tools, and then Manage Libraries, and we got here, and now we search, let's wait a moment for this to update the libraries list. Okay, now let's search for LCD over here, and uh, we get uh, here. This is the one we are looking for, the first in the list, Liquid Crystal, by Arduino and Adafruit. So let's install this version here. OK, all done. And now let's get some information about this library, which it appears over here. So this library, as you can see, has uh, a bunch of functionalities. This is the function uh, that defines how the LCD is going to be used. 
and these are all the functions that are used to control it. And I will show you some of those, but if, if you are interested in seeing how the whole library works, this is the place for you to go. So now let's go back here. The library looks like it's installed, and in fact we see here the information. So now that we have installed the new library for the LCD screen, let's uh, make the last changes to the code that we already used to test the DHT, and uh, let's see how it works. So we start again from here. First of all, since we are using uh, for this last test uh, DHT11, let me just uh, get back to that one. And so we are going to enable the DHT11 type now. And then the other thing that we are going to do is to add pound include for the new library, like that. Then what we need to do is to define a new object. So we create and initialize a static LCD object. For this one, we are going to use a number of parameters in the constructor. And these parameters are basically in the order in which they are inserted in the function call. Rs, enable, and then d4, d5, d6, and d7. So these are the parameters that I'm going to use. And uh, the call to set up uh, the new object would be liquid crystal. The object would be called LCD. And the parameters will be 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, where 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 are the digital pin of the Arduino that we will connect in the corresponding places of the display. So now that this is done, we can go here and we can also initialize the LCD. And uh, we will tell the library that this LCD has 16 columns and two rows. In addition to that, I am going to comment out the initialization of the serial monitor, and that's because, for what I have experienced, the serial monitor is not exactly very compatible with the liquid crystal library, so to avoid any issues I am going to disable the serial monitor, since we anyway are going to read everything on the display, so we don't need anymore the serial monitor itself. The measure function has also a bunch of calls to serial monitor, so I am going to remove all of them, and I'm going to do it like this, with just a multi-line comment. And then I'm going to add a new function, which I'm going to name Visualize, which is the one that will print the information collected by the other function measure to the LCD display. This function will basically set the cursor to the first position in the LCD. So set cursor to 0, 0. Then it will print the symbol for temperature, which I decide to be a capital T. So T equals little space, and then we print on the display the actual value of temperature in Celsius. And then we keep printing, and this time we we'll print the letter C to indicate that this is Celsius. Then some space, so we can write also the value in Fahrenheit, and that will be another print of the variable F, which holds the value of the temperature in Fahrenheit, and then another print to write the F that stands for Fahrenheit. And then at this point, this is the end of the line, so we don't go any further. So now we have to still write the humidity, and for that we will set the cursor again to the next line, and the first column, of course. And so we will put it to 0, the first column, and 1, which is the second line. Then we will print the name humidity, equals, space, and then the actual value of the humidity which is held in the variable h. And finally, one last print to write the percentage symbol. And that's it. This is the visualization. So now what we have to do is just to add the new function over here. So right after we do the measure, we call the visualize function, which will display the numbers on the display monitor. And then again, we wait for a couple of seconds, and we start doing this all over again. So let's check if uh, this uh, code compiles correctly, and everything looks fine. 
so we now can go and upload this code to the Arduino Uno. And here is the Builded Circuit, which I made directly on the same board that we used already for the other two experiments with the DHT11 and the DHT22. You can see here all the connections. This here is the data bus connected behind here on the panel. You can see all the cables on the display on this side. This is the data line which goes to the digital pins 7, 6, 5 and 4. Then here is the potentiometer connected to plus and minus two ends and the center is connected here on the V0 pin which is the one that controls the contrast of the display. And then this is the power supply of the backlight of the display, ground and positive through the resistor that 220 volts. And finally there is another ground here which is for the read-write pin, the power supply again for the display. Here we have the DHT11 sensor mounted on its breakout board where I have connected the pin 1 to the positive, pin 2 to the negative of the power supply and pin 3 is the signal which goes again like in the cases before to the digital pin 2 of the Arduino. So this is all the circuit now we have to just download the program and test it and see how it works. Let's now upload the code to the Arduino and let's see how it works. So, first of all, I have here the program. Let me compile it one more time, just to make sure everything is fine. Okay, there is an extra thing over here. Okay, so let me compile it again, just to make sure that everything is fine. The code looks fine. So, now I am going to connect the power here and the USB. And now I am going to hit the upload button. I think it's done, so I think now it's time to control here the contrast of the display. Oh, here it is. I think this is the best I can do it in terms of reading it. And you can see right now the temperature is about 21 centigrades or 69.8 Fahrenheit. And the humidity is at 49% here in the lab. Let me just do something now. Let me see if I can increase the temperature a little bit. You see it's coming up slowly but definitely and it's feeding also the humidity on my hand as you can see so let me remove my hand now and let's see if we slowly go back to the previous value it's gonna take a while of course but you see it's already going down both the temperature and the humidity so this is basically how the circuit works with the display and uh, as you can see this is much easier to use than the serial monitor the temperature is still going down and the humidity is of 46 now, 45, so a little bit of the time goes down, so that's it basically. Before concluding, let me give you just a few extra words on the two sensors I presented. Although very similar in installation and usage, these two sensors have different capabilities in terms of range of measurements and precision. The DHT11 is more useful for indoor applications, where you want to use it to measure for example the temperature and the humidity in a room. But the DHT22, given its ample range of measurements, is more useful for outside applications, like building a weather station. In fact, it can provide the total range from 0 to 100% of humidity measurements, and a range of temperatures good enough to work in both very cold and very warm regions and seasons. This should not prevent you, however, to use it also for indoor applications, in place of the less precise DHT11, if the precision is what you are looking for. But of course, you will have to pay the extra precision with slower reading cycles and a little extra price, although both sensors are really quite cheap. Let me know your thoughts through the comments, especially if you think of an unusual way of using these sensors. I might try these new ideas myself. Thank you for watching, and as usual, happy experiments!